Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Sylvia and Emma Stowe. Wonderful evening. Um, question, the, the so-called two-state solution has been batted around now for so long. My question to you is, what would be the Melanie Phillips solution? <laughs> Well, my solution is not to think that it, my, my, my solution is not to to, um, to think that uh, um, my solution is to reconceptualize the problem. In order to find a solution, you have to identify the problem correctly. The two-state solution is a solution to a problem which says here is a piece of land being fought over by two peoples with uh, equivalent, if not equal, claims to the land. The answer is obvious, you divide it, okay? If that was the problem, that might well be the solution, but that wasn't the problem. The problem was that one set of people has a murderous intent towards the other and wishes to deny that people their rightful claim to the land. In other words, it is a completely unjustified war of aggression being waged against the Jewish people in the land of Israel. Now, if you have a completely unjustified war of aggression, uh, there is only one solution to that war of aggression. You defeat it. You defeat the aggressor. You stop the aggressor. But there will be no solution in the Second World War, and I'm not trying to make an equation here, but you'll get the general gist. It would be no solution to the Second World War to say, hmm, here you have the Allies on one side and the Axis powers on the other. Hmm, they're both fighting. Obviously, the solution is to divide it up between them. Clearly, not a solution, because that wasn't the problem. So, the problem is that the world has allowed itself to accept the reconfiguration of what's gone on in the Middle East, in the Middle East Empire, through the war on the Arabs against the Jews for the last century, which is an Arab war of extermination against the Jewish presence in the land of Israel. It's allowed itself to reconceptualize that, or to allow the Arabs to reconceptualize it for them as a fight over land. And as a result, it's got the wrong solution to the wrong problem. I would not start from there. I would say the problem is we have to stop a murderous and genocidal war of aggression against the Jewish people. That war has to end by a victory for the Jewish people and the defeat of the aggressor, who are entitled to nothing. No aggressor in the history of the civilized world has ever been entitled to anything belonging to their victim. Their victims and victims of aggression have never been expected by any civilized person to have to make compromises with the aggressor. That is considered to be surrender, or used to be considered surrender. So we have to be conceptualized in that way. We have to say, the problem is the war of aggression. That's got to stop. When it stops, we'll see what the land looks like. We don't start from the position of saying, we are going to solve this by working out what the land is going to look like, what the area is going to look like, how the region is going to be divided up after the war of aggression stops. We've just got to stop the war of aggression, then we'll see. In other words, we shouldn't even be talking about who gets what, which bit goes where. It's not relevant, because once we talk about that, whatever view we have, whether we think the Israelis should keep Judea and Samaria, whether we think they should give back bits but keep the settlement blocks, whatever we think, it's going on to the argument of the enemy. It's basically accepting that this is a fight over land. It is not. It is a fight for life, for justice, and for truth and for history. And so we have to conceptualize. We have to stop talking about solutions in terms of land. We have to talk about victory over murderous and genocidal aggression. Yeah. Well, I have a um, question for Gloria. I think this is going to be the last question. Okay. 